I would like to plead with us as parents and as people that we should be mindful of what we talk to our children about. Be it at school or at home, what we brainwash our children about. In times of the past challenges that the whole country, all over Europe, had with uh, people of color. We need to allow the things of the past to, we need to leave the things of the past in the past. Because if, if we do not, we are indirectly brainwashing our children and instilling hatred into our children. Indirectly, we are preparing for a future that is uncertain in terms of a father, a future that will be full of strife, hatred, and grievances that can bring back what has been buried in the past. Because if we brainwash our, our children, be it at school or at home, with all those the stories of hatred in the past, we are ending it with the good part of it that, thank God, those past, those times are gone and dusted. Those times are forgotten. We now have liberation. We now have freedom. We now have equality. And we, we, we sow the seed of hatred into our kids by planting all those horrible stories into their head, what will the future hold for our children or for the society? Or should I say for the nation? I personally, I have said it before in my video, I'm of Nigerian background, born and bred in Nigeria, and I am proud to be a Nigerian. Even though I'm a British citizen, when I got here, I neutralized, I became a British citizen. But I, was, I am born and bred in Nigeria, and I'm a proud Nigerian. Having said this, this does not mean that my fellow Nigerian people will do something that is wrong, and I will blindly support it. No, I won't. Because I'm a Nigerian, that does not mean that I will support something that is completely wrong for anyone to do. It does not matter if you are from my country, my Nigerian, or you are from another nationality. The same way I will react to any other people of any other nationality is the same way I will react to you, be you Nigerian or British. Because that is me for you. And if something is, if, if a fellow person like myself, I will say Nigerian person like myself, does something that is, you know, absolutely wrong, especially if it concerns me or affects me or my loved one or someone close to me, or be it directly or indirectly, I'm involved in, you know, whosoever it affected, which can either directly or indirectly affect me as well. The same way I will handle it with any person of any nationality is the same way I will handle it with the person that call that is Nigerian, like I said. That does not make me a racist. Yeah, it is true. People of my same color, people of color are racist. Some are racist towards another people of color like themselves. Some nationalities are racist towards people of color like themselves. I wouldn't dispute that. But because um, of the fear that, oh, I don't want to be called a racist. Oh, I don't want to be called this. Oh, I don't want to be called that does not mean that I should support evil or wickedness or something that is absolutely not right or wrong. I will not support it whatsoever. It does not make me a racist. 
Like I mentioned also in my last video, that I find it difficult to tolerate people that are bully, people that behave badly unnecessarily and victimize others, oppress others, or do something that is, you know, absolutely unwarranted to innocent people. People that are just trying to live their life that goes their way. That does something to them that is absolutely uncalled for. If it affects me personally, I will speak out if I have to. If I can handle it quietly, I will handle it quietly and just look away. But if, if it's a situation that I'm cornered that I have to speak out, that I have to speak out, I will do so. And try as much as possible to handle it calmly. But if a situation will want me to handle it by shouting out loud and screaming out loud, I will not hesitate to do that as well. Having said this, it is okay to sort things out amicably as much as possible. But in a situation whereby you can't, we are different the way we handle things. We handle things differently. I've just spoken briefly about myself. I'm very much flexible. I'm very, very much flexible, but I've just said little about myself. In as much I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a generally, in as much I'm generally a quiet, peaceful person. And I avoid trouble as much as I can. I, 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 in fact, I shy away from trouble. In as much I am a quiet, peaceful person, when I get to my wit end, that person will see another side of me. And I won't hesitate to show another side of me if I'm pushed to the wit end. But that does not mean that, oh, because this person is the same of... The person is a person of the same color as myself. I shouldn't react. That is not what racism is all about. Racism is more complex, much more complex than that. Racism has to do with your skin color. Someone that cannot stand the God of your skin color. That the fact that you are different in terms of your skin color. And much more complex than that. Being honest, regardless of skin color, and handling things honestly in all truthfulness does not make you a racist. Regardless, like I said earlier, your color, your background, I can hardly take rubbish from anyone, even though I'm extremely tolerant. But when I get to my weak hand, I will turn back and say, you know what, I've heard enough of you. Stop. If I have to avoid and run, not run as a coward, but if I have to avoid and run, I will avoid and run from trouble. But if I'm at my if I'm cornered, I will turn back. It doesn't make me a racist. Racism, yeah, racism is about. It does not matter. Also, like I said earlier, racism is even among people of my own nationality, my own color. People of different nationality, my own color. It can be from people of different color as well and nationality to other people's nationality and other people's color. Racism is personal thing. But we need to be careful what we instill into our children. In 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 the name, in the name of learning or teaching them. When we stock their brain with the Things of the past that has been buried. It's like opening a grave, a graveyard, bringing out something that has been gone and dusted. And in so doing, the world will not be able to move forward, will not be able to move ahead. It's like dragging the whole world, the new generation of the people, back into the past. And nobody will be able to move ahead. We will not be able to move ahead. The world will not be able to move ahead. And we are like slowly, gradually bringing our new generation into the past 
into that time, we are indirectly reopening the gate into that time of the past when we fill our younger generation with hatred because of what happened in the past. The most important thing is that the past is gone and, and dead. It's dead, it's gone, it's buried. We all need to move forward. And the important thing of a hall is that everybody have uh, the elaboration, everyone have a liberation, everyone has rights of equality. I might be Nigerian. That won't stop me and I won't shy away from saying the truth because I'm a Nigerian. If a Nigerian, fellow Nigerian like myself, did something that is absolutely unacceptable or against the law or wrong, I am proud to be a Nigerian. I'm proud of my origin. I'm proud of my roots. Well, for some people to be using a racism thing and all this stuff, to blackmail others, to intimidate others, whereas the real racists are them, themselves. And putting stuff, jumble, mumbo jumble, rubbish into the head of our younger generation to trigger another problem in the nearest future. This is unacceptable. We might be of the same nationality. Well, if you treat me right, I'll treat you right. They used to, they this popular saying that respect is reciprocal. If you treat me respectfully, I will treat you respectfully. Personally, I as a person, I don't even have time for that. When I go out, my focus, my attention is what I went out to do. And that's why when I get people behaving badly around me, I just look, sometimes you see me just look, and I look away. I just like assess that person that I don't have time for you. I might not even say anything. The moment I assess you from up down, my assessment is telling you I don't have time for you. I don't have time for people that are going around behaving badly or treating other people shabbishly or badly in a in a human manner. I don't have time. It's not all the time that you start talking. I'll just look at you like, you know what? I don't have time for rubbish. And I continue with what I'm doing. And I get out of the place. Because I have a whole lot on my plate already. My time is not even enough to take care of it all. So I won't, I won't have time for, for, for people that does not have better thing to do with their time. That like they will go out of their way to behave badly towards others. To behave in a bitchy manner towards others. Because I don't talk, some people might even see me just behave anyhow or like look and look at people sometimes anyhow. Because I didn't say anything, they won't understand what happened between the two of us for me to do that. And sometimes you see people castigate you and say, oh, she's arrogant, she's proud. I know that I'm not arrogant. I know that I'm not proud. What I see, if you don't see, don't judge. And that's why the Bible said we should not judge one another. I know that I'm very much calm and well, in terms of down to hurt, very, very much realistic person. But arrogance, no, I'm not. Proud, no, I'm not. But I'm self-confident. I have full self-confidence in myself. And I'm proud of who I am, who God made me to be. Like I used to encourage everyone to be proud of who God made you to be. If you know that you have a clause, work on yourself and make the best out of yourself. Make the, your, your parents be proud of who you have become. That is my philosophy of life. Challenges will definitely come. But if we trust in God and we pray to him for help, help will come. Sooner or later, help will definitely come. There are many people that have changed. They, that's God's 
one thing or the other in terms of bad habit and all this stuff. And they work on themselves and they became a better person. If they can, if they can do it, anyone else can do it. I'm not arrogant type, neither am I the proud type. But as much as I'm very tolerant and I'm quiet person, I can't stand anything that, you know, in terms of, uh, I can't stand any, any, any bad behavior kind of from people. Even if I manage to tolerate it sometimes, I just want to get out of the environment because the environment automatically is too, is toxic, poisonous. And I don't want a poisonous, toxic environment. I'll just get out of there. If I can stay and tolerate to the period of time I need to be around, I will do so. If I can't, I will just get out of there because I don't need it. Neither did anyone need a toxic, poisonous environment where people generate negative, poisonous, toxic behavior, aura. Toxic aura cannot bring any positivity. And that is my own philosophy about life. I see the world in the light of God. And I see the world in a positive light, with a positive mind. Even people around me here and there, I see them, I look at them with a positive light. But when I see the person or people behaving in negative or poisonous or toxic manner, I just look and look away. And try as much as possible to avoid any contact, not to talk of any having any issue with any one of them. But when you trespass, you go out of your way, you come and trespass and you put yourself on my face and everything. That means you're forcing me to open up my mouth and talk. If I have to, I will. If I don't have to, I'll walk around you and go my way because that's the kind of person I have. It's not because I'm a coward. It's because I like to shy away from confrontation and everything. Because if I'm forced to speak or go into confrontation, nobody will like it. Even myself, I will not like it. And that's why I shy away from it. May God help us all in Jesus' mighty name. Or well, we should be mindful of what we put in the head of our children. What kind of information we instill in their head. Some of us are not mindful of this. And indirectly, we are building a generation of children that are being contaminated. Their mind are being contaminated. Their brain are being contaminated against other gender, against other people, against other nationality. And we make them believe that, oh, you're doing the right thing because you believe that people of your own skin alone are the good people. They are the only victim. Whereas that's not true. Saying the truth does not make you a racist. I will not support a lie, and neither will I support any form of deceit. Many people of different nationality have been victim in terms of the, the old, cold past. Well, the good thing, like I said earlier, is that the world has been able to, you know, push forward. You know? Ahead of all this, and these are done, gone, dusted. We need to leave the past in the past so that we can move ahead. If we continue living in the past that we're pushing our children to the past, that means we are dragging them, the generation that's supposed to push the world, the nation forward, we're dragging them into the past. And it is... Honestly, not a good thing for us, for those children and the new generation to come. It is not a good thing. Let bygone be bygone. Let us leave the past in the past, gone forever, and look towards a better future for ourselves, 
for our children, for the new generations to come. In the, God will help us all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.